Today, I'm gonna show you five powerful but overlooked effects in Apple Motion. The first effect on this list is the compound blur. It can be located under filters, blur, compound blur. When you first apply this effect, it's gonna look like nothing has happened. That is because we need to bring in a map of some sort to tell it how to drive this effect. So I'm gonna go into my generators and locate the clouds generator, then I'll just drag it into my effects group. From there, I can disable the visibility of the clouds, then select the compound blur. I'll jump inside of my inspector and you'll notice that I have this blur map well. All I need to do is drag the clouds into this well. Now it still might look like nothing is happening here, but that is because my amount is pretty low. Right now it's set to 7. Let's go ahead and bring this all the way up to 300 so you can really see the effect. And now you'll notice that however bright or dark a part of this image is in the clouds is how much blur is being applied onto our clip. This is a great way to drive some fog effects or even to make it look like you're looking through a window. If I wanted to look like this was grime on some glass, all I would need to do is go into the clouds, go to the generator and take the speed down to zero. So now it's completely locked off. And what's really cool is we can drag our subscribe text through it and you'll see how it's changing based on the location of our subscribe text. The next effect on this list is the overdrive effect. Going up to filters, we can go down to glow, then select overdrive. At first, this is gonna look a little bit crazy and you definitely could use it like this. If I push play, you'll see how it's animating through these different colors, giving it this nice little shake effect. We'll go ahead and take the intensity down quite a bit we can adjust our sizing to our liking and we can go ahead and set the rotation down to zero degrees. You could even go in and change the colors of the text items and from there if I push play you'll see how this text is still looking really crazy but something that I love to do with this effect is to select the group that contains the effect then we'll go up to filters go down to time and select strobe. This is essentially going to apply a stop motion effect onto this text and we can set our frames per second over here on the left side. I'll set it to eight. So let's go ahead and push play and see how that looks. And now we have this cool jittery effect. For some reason it makes me think of comic books or something like that. So it's just a really fun effect to play around with. The next effect on this list can be located under filters, stylize, and select extrude. You'll see how this text now looks like it is 3D. And this is a great way to fake some 3D elements in your scene. But you'll also notice that I have this on-screen control that I can drag around the screen. So this is a great way to get different directions on your 3D object. But even more so is we can adjust the actual coloring of the stretched out lines. Right now, it's taking on the colors of whatever this text is. So if I select this text, we go into the appearance and change the color over to gradient. Then we could load in a custom gradient, something like rainbow. You'll see how the color of the text is now adjusting the 3D dimension of the text. We could even adjust stuff like the back size. So now it looks like this text is extending from infinity. So this is a super fun effect to play around with and I absolutely love using this on my logos whenever I need something to appear 3D. The next filter can be found under filters, stylize, then crystallize. If I play through, you'll see how there's this animated crystal texture on my text, but this can be a powerful way to add some roughness to the edges of your text. I'll go over to the left-hand side and locate the speed option and set that down to zero. So now that texture is just locked into place. We can also go into the size settings and adjust that accordingly. So if we bring it way down, we now have a nice chalk-like texture onto our text. But one other way that I love to use this effect is by bringing up the speed and then selecting the group that contains all of our elements. We'll go to filters, we'll go down to time and then select strobe once more. From here, we could change the strobe rate down to something like eight frames per second. And if we push play, we now have this great little stop motion effect on our text and it almost looks like it's hand drawn. The last filter can be found under filters, distortion, then select insect eye. Now at first you might think this is something that you really don't care about, but there are a few features in this that I really love. The first of which is this size option. We can go ahead and drag that way down and now we just have this simple little texture on our text. But what's really cool is this refraction option. 
If I set this down to zero, you'll see how it's created this nice honeycomb effect on my text. And again, we could adjust the size of this to get a different look. So you could even drag this all the way up to 512 and then animate it going back down until your text is revealed. But one other feature that I really love is this border option. If I find the border size, I could drag that up and you'll notice we now have all of these nice hexagons that we could use as a backdrop or just a really cool texture for our text. So if I go ahead and animate the size, you can see how those hexagons are dragging down to nothing. So that was five powerful but overlooked effects in Apple Motion. Did you know about all of these? Let me know down in the comments. And you may want to check out this video where I show you five more powerful effects in Apple Motion. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.